because you guys have sent in like a ton of stuff about AI and it's super interesting. So in this deep dive, we're going to break it all down and get to like the core of it all. So you can be up to speed, you know, with what's actually important about AI for businesses. Yeah right now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the main thing we've been looking at is this McKinsey Global Survey on AI. It came out just last month, March 2025, but the data is from July 2024. So it's pretty recent. It gives us a really good look at how companies are using AI, not just kind of messing around with it, but really making it part of how they work. Both, you know, the regular analytical AI, but also all this new stuff with generative AI. Generative AI, just to be clear, is the kind that can actually create things, you know, like text, images, even code. Different from the older AI that's mainly about analyzing data that's already there. Right, right. So we've got a few things we want to cover today. First, how are businesses changing how they're structured, you know, and their processes because of AI? And then the big question. Where are they actually seeing results? Where's the real value? And of course, where is it not working? Also, we've got to talk about the risks. Every new technology has them. And lastly, we'll look at how AI is shaking things up in terms of jobs and skills. There's some pretty surprising stuff in here, you know, like how much the CEO actually matters and what AI really means for jobs. It's not as simple as people think. So, uh, ready to get into it. Absolutely. Let's start with the big picture. The first thing that jumps out is how fast KI is being adopted. I mean, it's everywhere. By July 2024, 78% of businesses were using AI in at least one area. Wow, 78%. That's that's huge. It is, especially when you compare it to the year before when it was only 55%. That's a pretty big jump in just one year. Yeah, that is a big jump. And it's not just any type of AI either, right? Generative AI is, well, it's blowing up like really fast. By July 2024, 71% of companies were using it regularly. And like just a few months earlier, at the start of 2024, it was already at 65%. That's crazy. It is. And it's not just isolated teams within companies either. It seems like most businesses are now using AI in, on average, three different areas of their business. Okay, so lots of companies are using AI, especially this generative AI. It's becoming more common across, you know, all sorts of businesses. But are they making money from it? Like, that's the big question, right? Absolutely. And that's where it gets really interesting. What we see from the survey is that companies are starting to realize that just having the AI tools isn't enough. Mm -hmm. They're beginning to make big changes to how they're organized and how they do things to really get the most out of, especially generative AI. Mm -hmm. The bigger companies, the ones with over $500 million in revenue, seem to be moving faster on this. So what are they doing differently? Like, what really makes a difference in you're actually boosting profits? I mean, for those listening, we're talking about EBIT. Earnings before interest in taxes. Basically, how much money a company is making from its main business. Right. Well, there are two things that stand out. First, and this might surprise some people, is how involved the CEO is. Specifically, their role in what's called AI governance. That basically means setting the rules for how a company uses AI ethically, you know, data privacy, all that. And it's not just about the tech working right, but also avoiding bias and risks. The survey found that, especially for larger companies, having the CEO actively involved in AI governance is really linked to a bigger impact on EBIT. That's really interesting. You'd think it would be more about the tech team or some AI specialist driving that profit, but it's really about the CEO setting the tone and the rules. You mentioned some numbers earlier, something like 28% of companies overall had the CEO overseeing this AI governance stuff. But for the bigger companies, when asked about board responsibility, it was only 17%. So it's more about like strategic direction, leadership from the top. Exactly. It's not just about the nuts and bolts of the tech. It's about that top-down commitment. And the survey shows that usually it's not just one person in charge of AI governance. Usually two leaders are sharing that responsibility. Okay, so strong leadership from the CEO check. What's the second big thing that helps companies get value from AI? The second thing, and this is the one the survey found to have the biggest effect on profit for companies of all sizes, is completely redesigning workflows. It's not just about adding AI to the way things are already done. It's about thinking totally differently about how work gets done to use what's special about generative AI. You can't just automate old ways of doing things and expect amazing results. But the survey says that only about 21% of companies are actually doing this, this really deep redesign of how they work. Why do you think that is? Is it just too hard? Or maybe they don't fully get the potential? I think it's probably a bunch of reasons. Redesigning workflows is a big project. You know, it takes time, resources, and people have to be willing to change how they do things. And 
There's probably some uncertainty about the best way to actually use generative AI in their processes, but the fact that so few are doing it suggests that even though companies are using the tech, they're still figuring out how to really transform their operations and get those big financial returns. Makes sense. So companies are figuring things out, but the survey also talked about how companies are organizing their AI efforts, specifically about centralizing things. What did they find there? Well, it's interesting. They're being pretty strategic about what they centralize. For things like risk management, compliance, and data governance for AI, most are going with a fully centralized model, usually with a center of excellence, which makes sense, right? You want consistency, oversight, and experts in those areas. Right, especially when it comes to managing the risks. But what about the other stuff, the more proactive things, like finding tech talent? and actually rolling out the AI tools. For those areas, finding and managing tech talent, think data engineers and machine learning people, and the actual adoption of AI solutions across the company, a hybrid model seems more common. So some things are managed centrally, while others are spread out across different departments or business units. Smaller companies, interestingly, are more likely to centralize everything, probably because they have fewer resources or a simpler structure. So it's not one size fits all when it comes to centralizing AI. All right, let's move on to the risks of using AI, specifically generative AI. It's not all sunshine and roses, right? Definitely not. The survey shows companies are becoming much more aware of the risks, and they're working harder to minimize them. They're particularly concerned about three main areas. The accuracy of what AI produces, cybersecurity, and intellectual property theft. And these are also the risks that companies report having actually caused problems. And are the bigger companies doing a better job of managing these risks? Well, larger companies are generally addressing a wider range of risks, particularly in cybersecurity and data privacy. But what's interesting is that they're not necessarily doing a better job when it comes to the accuracy or explainability of AI's output. It seems like those challenges are pretty universal, regardless of company size. So some challenges are just tough, no matter how big you are. The survey also mentioned that a lot of companies have already had bad experiences with generative AI. Right, that's well, that's a little worrying. It is. Around 47% of companies said they'd experienced at least one negative consequence. And that's pretty much the same as it was in early 2024. So while companies are more aware of the risks, actually preventing those negative outcomes is still a challenge. So what are they doing to monitor what the AI is doing to catch problems before they get too big? It varies a lot. Some, about 27%, say they check everything the AI produces before using it. But on the other hand, another 27% say they only check 20% or less. So very different approaches. Probably depends on how much risk they're willing to take and how they're using the AI in the first place. Companies in certain sectors, like business, legal, and professional services, are much more likely to check everything. Which makes sense. The stakes are higher in those areas. Okay, so there's no standard playbook for managing these risks. Got it. But what about best practices? The report talked about that, right? Like, what should companies be doing to really succeed with AI to make it work for them? This is crucial. The survey shows that while more and more companies are using AI, most haven't seen a big company-wide impact on their bottom line. And the main reason seems to be that they're not fully implementing the known best practices for scaling up new technologies. In fact, another survey looking specifically at developed markets found that only 1% of executives considered their generative AI rollouts to be, quote unquote, mature. Wow, only 1%. We're really still in the early days then. But McKinsey did identify 12 practices for adopting and scaling AI. Which ones make the biggest difference in actually boosting profit? in having a real impact on EBIT. The one that really stands out is consistently tracking key performance indicators, KPIs, specifically for their generative AI solutions. Which makes sense, you can't improve something if you're not measuring it. For the larger companies, having a clear roadmap for how they're going to adopt generative AI is also really important. That roadmap probably helps keep everyone on the same page and make sure different parts of a large company are working together. That makes sense. A roadmap would definitely help with coordination. But it sounds like most companies aren't doing most of these best practices, even though they know they should. You're right. Less than a third of the companies surveyed said they were doing most of those 12 things. The bigger companies, though, are doing better in this area. They're more likely to have dedicated AI teams, have regular internal communication about the benefits of AI, involve senior leadership, provide specific training for different roles, integrate AI solutions into how they work, have clear roadmaps and ways to get feedback. And they focus on building trust, both with employees and customers. They also tend to create stories around the changes AI is bringing and really track those KPIs we talked about. They even use incentives to get employees on board. 
So the big companies with more resources have an advantage in putting those basic building blocks in place. Makes sense. Now let's shift gears a bit and talk about how AI is affecting jobs and skills. <laughs> what are the main trends we're seeing in hiring and the skills that companies need? Overall, the hiring for AI-related jobs has stayed pretty steady compared to last year's survey. However, there's been a drop in demand for data visualization and design specialists. On the other hand, we're seeing new jobs popping up focused on managing the risks of AI. Roles like AI compliance specialists and AI ethics specialists. Companies are hiring for those. So more focus on managing the risks, just like we talked about earlier. What about company size? Are the bigger companies hiring differently for AI roles? Yes, they are. Larger companies are generally hiring for a wider range of AI-related roles. The difference is especially big when it comes to core technical roles like AI data scientists, machine learning engineers, and data engineers. They need a lot more of those people than smaller companies. And how hard is it for companies to actually find and hire people with AI skills? Is it as That's tough as everyone says? It's interesting. While it's still a challenge to recruit for many AI roles, fewer companies are saying it's difficult compared to previous years. Maybe there are more people with those skills now, or maybe companies are looking for slightly different skills. But one thing's for sure, AI data scientists are still in super high demand. Half of the companies surveyed said they'll need to hire more of them this year. So some of the hiring pressure might be easing a bit, but certain specialized skills are still very valuable. Now, what about the people already working at these companies? How is AI affecting the need for reskilling, for training people to have new skills? Reskilling is becoming a top priority for companies. Many have already invested in reskilling their employees in the past year because of AI, and they expect to do even more over the next three years. This shows that companies are realizing that success with AI isn't just about hiring new people, it's also about making sure current employees have the skills to work with AI tools. That makes sense. So what's happening to all the time that AI is freeing up? Are we seeing lots of layoffs because of it? It's a mixed bag, actually. The most common thing companies are reporting is that employees are using that extra time for new tasks or to spend more time on things that haven't been automated. But the larger companies are more likely to say they've reduced headcount because of the time saved by AI. And interestingly, the survey suggests that these headcount reductions are linked to getting more profit from generative AI. So the effect on jobs isn't the same everywhere. Overall, what do companies expect to happen to the number of people they employ in the next few years? Well, most companies, 38%, think that generative AI won't really change their overall workforce size in the next three years. Financial services is a bit different, though. More companies in that sector expect to see job cuts. It's interesting that CEOs and other managers have pretty similar expectations. Although CEOs tend to be a bit more optimistic about overall headcount increases, when considering the impact of all types of AI, not just generative AI. So maybe a bit more optimism at the top. Now, are there specific areas within companies where they're expecting bigger changes in headcount? Yes. The survey suggests that companies are expecting fewer people working in service operations, like customer service and in supply chain and inventory management, but they expect more employees in IT and product development. That makes sense, right? AI can probably automate a lot of the routine tasks in service operations and supply chain, but you need more people to build and manage those AI-powered products and systems. Makes sense. Okay, let's talk about where generative AI is actually being used the most. The survey shows that companies are mostly using it for things like marketing and sales, developing new products and services, service operations, software engineering, and IT. These are areas where AI can really help with efficiency, innovation, and creating value. And are they using it the same way in different industries? Well, while using it in marketing and sales seems pretty common across most industries, the other areas vary quite a bit. For example, media and telecom companies are focusing on service operations, tech companies on software engineering, and professional services on knowledge management. So companies are being strategic, using AI where it makes the most sense for their industry. Oh, and larger companies are using generative AI in more areas of their business compared to smaller companies. So they're finding more ways to use it. What about the types of things they're actually creating with AI? Text is still the most common. 63% are using it for that. But companies are experimenting with other things too. Over a third are using it to create images and over a quarter to create computer code. So it's not just about chatbots and writing anymore. Tech companies are using it for the widest range of things. And more advanced industries are using it to generate images and audio. It's definitely going beyond just simple text. Oh. Okay, back to value, the big question. Is all this AI actually making companies more money? 
The good news is that more and more companies are reporting higher revenue in the specific parts of their business where they're using generative AI, and they're seeing the same thing with the older analytical AI. Also, most companies now say they're seeing cost reductions from generative AI in most areas of their business. That's a change from what they found in early 2024. HR, human resources, is one area where half the company said they'd reduced costs. So, good things happening at the departmental level, but what about overall? for the whole company. That's where it gets tricky. Even with all those positive results in different departments, the survey shows that most companies over 80% haven't seen a big impact on their overall profit, their EBIT. Only 17% said that 5% or more of their profit in the last year came from using generative AI. So you can have individual teams doing great, but if the whole company isn't aligned, the overall financial impact is limited. So it all comes back to that need for company-wide strategy and change. One last thing, the survey also looked at how individual employees are using generative AI. Right, and we're seeing a big increase in that, especially among CEOs. 53% said they regularly use generative AI for work. And this trend of individuals using AI is growing across all industries and regions. So the people at the top are using it, which hopefully means they understand it better and will support using it more widely in their companies. Mm -hmm. Well, this has been a really fascinating deep dive into AI and where it's headed based on this great McKinsey survey. What would you say are the most important takeaways for our listeners? I think the main takeaways are pretty clear. The adoption of AI, and especially generative AI, is exploding. But just having the technology isn't enough. To really benefit, companies need to make strategic changes. They need strong leadership from the CEO, a new way of thinking about how work gets done, a solid plan for managing the risks, and they need to follow those best practices for rolling it out and scaling it up. And when it comes to jobs, the impact of AI is more complicated than just, you know, everyone losing their jobs. Exactly. It's not that simple. It's creating a need for reskilling, and it's changing how many people are needed in different parts of a company. Some areas will shrink, others will grow. It's a dynamic situation. So as our listeners think about all this, what's the one big question they should be asking themselves? What's the most important thing to consider? I'd say think about how all of this about AI adoption, creating value, and the changing workforce aligns with your own experience. What's happening in your industry? What are the biggest changes you need to pay attention to? And what are the most important questions you should be asking within your own company as AI keeps advancing? Don't just get caught up in the hype. Focus on the strategic and organizational things that will really determine success and create long-term value in this new world of AI-powered business. Great advice. Thanks for breaking it all down for us. All right, that's it for this deep dive. Until next time, keep those questions coming. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure.